whole turtle here. This guy's pretty fresh. Tony the turtle. Sad turtle. Yeah, it sucks, man. Look at this. It's crazy. It's like a turtle graveyard, this island. A turtle birthing yard and a turtle graveyard. I had no idea they died after they gave birth. I'm not sure why they die. Like, why did they die? Is it just after, not always, but sometimes after they had like a spread all their eggs. It's a place called Duff Reef and it's beautiful. It's just this tiny little sand spit. And check this out. Check out the color of this water right here. Uh, yeah. Hello. nest here. All these holes here are from turtles nesting in, I think. We haven't seen any yet, but we're gonna keep our eyes peeled and make sure not to step on anything. So sad, but uh, life continues and this old turtle is full of hermit crabs. Because they're having a little feast in there, a little hermit party. They're taking full advantage of this and I don't know how old this turtle is, but uh, yeah, probably a few months I would guess and it's almost completely gone. So everything that uh, it left behind is well taken care of. His name is Hermit. Hermit the dead turtle? Yeah, Hermit the dead turtle. It's quite sad, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? Come here, look at their fingers. They're like, their fingers are basically, they actually have fingers. Like, look at this. That's crazy. Yeah, this wow. is, I mean, aside from the fact it's one of the saddest things I've seen, it's really cool. This must be one of the most like remote spots in the South Pacific. I mean, there's no one here. This is, that's us. That's our boat up there. And there's no one else here, like, except turtles. Lots of turtles, lots of dead turtles. Oh, and a palm tree. What is it with palm trees? One, two palm trees in the middle of nowhere. What is, like, how do you, why, why, why? like six hours so yeah this is a big squall coming our way and we're just scoping out this island quickly before we uh, get get rained on fiercely fiercely I don't think I've ever been sailing in this much rain it's crazy man it's just freaking bucketing down like and there's no wind, it's not like a squall, it's like a rainstorm. But uh, we're capturing some water, we're gonna fill the tanks. I don't think I've ever rain, seen a rain this hard here. He's literally collecting water, like it's coming down in buckets down the mainsail, and he's collecting it and pouring it straight into the tank. That bucket, right there, is siphoning into the tank. And then it's standing there at the mast, collecting it, and pour it into it. See, no water, no water, no water, no water. And water. Isn't that crazy? That he's collecting all that. <laughs> he doesn't want to stand out there anymore, I guess. Better close his window up tighter. So it's pretty incredible. We're just sailing along in the rain and uh, I've had this happen a few times where there's just a school of uh, tuna that follows the boat. Especially when you have the motor off and you're just sailing quietly along they just follow right along. I mean, if you put your rod out, you might even catch one. Why don't we have a rod out, Ben? Because they're skippies. I want a tuna! Can I put a big rod? 
What do you get? Showing Shay your fish off, buddy? Skipjack. Just a little guy. Yeah, they got a lot of power, man, for a skipjack. See you later, Skippy. Oh, yeah. We are just setting off to Fuglonga. Fuglonga. Right, Ben? We're sailing along and I'm catching water. Hopefully it'll be sunnier down south. It's true, we're lost as we sail around this world, whether we like to think about it or not. We bask in the wonder of yet another sunset. We immerse ourselves in the local culture, get off the beaten path, find incredible new adventures. Slowly, very slowly, our minds expand. We learn to be more tolerant, live with less judgment. As we sail deeper and deeper into the South Pacific, our hearts are warmed with the generosity of the locals we meet. This corner of the world is utterly beautiful. Often we wonder if we'll go back to the old way of life, the way we knew it before, a real job, a house, car, the city life. We don't have any answers right now. All we know is that long-term travel has changed our outlook permanently. We float in between two worlds, the modern West and the remote South Pacific. Neither is right nor wrong. We're just uh, walking to deliver our kava. Our 77. We have to do the 77 ceremony every time we arrive in a new village. And we are in Fulanga right now, and it's a bit of a walk to the little village, but it's a beautiful walk. Ben's wearing a skirt and it looks really cute. Oh, the chief is exactly, he's not well. Okay. He's uh, 91 years old. Okay. We hope that uh, you like our, our village, our island. Thank you, yes. Well, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to exploring here. It's absolutely breathtaking when you come in. <laughs> yeah. Whenever you want to come to the village, you go to his house and then he's going to take you around. Okay. It's okay to fish in the lagoon? It's okay to yeah. fish yeah. in the lagoon. Okay. Snorkeling. Yeah. I'm Bill, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Bill. Nice to meet you. Nice. <laughs> This is twist sister. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a lemon leaf. Lemon leaf tea. Wow. Lemon leaf tea. Yeah. yeah.
heading back now. We stayed a little bit later. We had some lovely tea. And now we're trying to not hit a balmy. There's some fruit grass flying and uh, Ashley brought the GPS with the iPad with the satellite imagery. And it's pretty cool because we can see all the coral balmies everywhere and without it we'd be going dead slow. Yeah, we're not we're not completely out to lunch this time. But let's not hit the island. <laughs> 